So why IGBT failure? Why do they fail? Let's come over here. This is an IGBT. So let's start with the, some of the basics. This is a insulated gate bipolar transistor. In short, there's a set of diodes in here that control flow. This is my DC bus side. So this would be my terminal one, two, and three. And then these two are one, two, and three, one, two, and three. DC power is coming in from this side. And then I am feeding AC out. Now this is a PWM. So we have our DC bus. And then we're going to have, this is going to be our positive and our negative. On the output side is going to be our AC. So all of these are going to feed into the AC. Now, depending on the configuration, this could be a single leg. So we could have L1, L2, L3, or there could be a bus bar across here and making all of this just one leg of power. And then we would have multiples of these modules in there. So this is just one configuration. Another thing to note with these is that we have individual gates. So right there is three gates, gate one, two, and three. Now they're combined in a single module, but they are independent gates. They can function in unison, which is part of what the modules is doing, is it's allowing them to work together as one single unit. And we do this to help distribute power flow because it's much easier to combine a series of smaller gates than it is to make just one big ass gate these fail for a couple of reasons. One, and this one's less likely, the motor side, which is over here, the motor side could be what failed. Yeah, the motor failing, causing a overcurrent condition or something here in the bus, or maybe it caused a back feed for one gate fed into the other gate and it caused an internal failure. Something like that could happen. Is that Does that happen very often? Not in my experience. Um, usually what I'll see with these is these actually have really good like protection built into most of them. Now, this is one of York's versions specifically. This is just a version. Another way to call an IGBT is an inverter. So if we start talking turbo core, turbo cores have an IGBT in them. It's what we just call it an inverter. This is an inverter. It's a, just another way of saying the same thing, depending on who you ask. Anyway, these have good protection in them most of the time. I don't see as many output failures or in, even input failures in some cases. I don't see as many because the module will detect a problem pretty quickly and just stop everything before a complete explosion happens. So in my experience... One of the more common failures I'll see is either it'll be heat related where the cooling system, which is what this is down here. These are plates. When these are in operation, this, these generate a lot of heat. That heat is just waste energy that is just natural to using solid state components. We haven't developed technology to avoid that yet. So we have to reject that heat somewhere. This particular one would have used a liquid cooling system. Some systems will use an air-cooled system to cool a, a heat sink. Just those variations will, will vary. But the point is, overheating is one of the th symptoms that I see. They'll run hot. Now, these have temperature sensors in them, but these temp sensors are only set to be a safety metric. And you can run really high temperatures on these and these, those high temps are really hard on the silicon. There's a difference between silicone and silicon. Silicon is the base element that all of these things are made out of. Silicone is a product that we use for sealing purposes. And from what I understand, it is, it is made out of a, out of a silicon base material. This turned into a dryable gel, if I'm not mistaken on that. Either way, with these... The way that I've been taught is these are like fibers inside of here. If we move this to the side, if we have one gate, okay, inside of that gate has a series of, call it like fibrous material, and that is the silicon material itself. Now, in reality, we've got diodes and stuff in there that are preventing flow, and, and we're doing different things. I could get into this on a schematic level, but we'll save that for another time. These fibers, which make up our internal components, 
you know, our diodes, they don't like heat. Heat will make them break down, which is why in some cases things will work just fine when they're cold, but once they start to warm up from operation, then they'll start showing symptoms. So when this base plate isn't being regulated at a cooler temperature than it probably should be, even if it's below the alarm threshold, that creates extra stress on those fibers, and those fibers will have a shorter lifespan. They'll break down faster, and they're not going to be able to carry that current load as efficiently. So what that ends up leading to is you start having an actual gate failure, where the gates themselves begin to just not process properly through them. One of the common signs I'll, I'll see of that is, one, you could have a current motor current issue where you have motor current alarms. That could be because one of these gates is not outputting correctly. Another could be a grinding noise. So I've had it to where the compressor will sound like it has a bad bearing. When in reality, it's not a bad bearing. It's the IGBT. And what I find is the IGBT is outputting a very dirty AC sine wave. And because of that, and because it, it's not synced up properly, because one of our gates is having a problem, it creates this unstable field on the motor. And that unstable field ends up causing a vibration which sounds like a bearing problem, but it's not. You can go put a new set of gates in, new set of IGBTs in, and it'll clean up and it'll sound just fine after that. It won't have a problem. That is a prime example of where you had a weak gate and it was causing a harmonic vibration on the motor itself. Another way I've tested this is if I've had a system where I had multiple compressors, I would actually sometimes swap the gates out. So, or if I had multiple chillers there, like if I really thought this was the case and the customer wanted to for sure know, not just go off of my best assumption, I would take one of the other IGBTs, put it in its place, and we would run test it and see if the compressor sounded better. If it did, we knew for a fact that that IGBT or that inverter needed to be taken care of. One of the ways to test this is with your meter on diode. So that's gonna be this little setting right here. We can measure across these. Now, this being my terminal one, everything's gonna come back to here. And I'll make sure you're, te when you're doing stuff like this, make sure you're testing the actual pads, which is this part, not the threads. If I reach down in here and these threads aren't making contact with the pad, it's gonna give me a different reading or it could be a false reading. So make sure you're, you're making contact with the pad. We see OL, we see a, a 0.34. Now, for this particular one, that's a good reading. And that's what I would expect to see. And it doesn't matter which of these other pads I go to, I get the same thing. That's because both of these are the same output internally, and then these are two separate inputs feeding off of the DC bus. That is how we're able to create the AC sine wave, is by manipulating this positive and negative DC uh, input. Anyway, we flip the leads around, and now we're getting different readings. So you could have a scenario where, in, in the field, this test right here, this IGBT just passed. Right there, this just passed. Okay, now I could do the other three gates. But let's just say all three of these pass. But I could still be having a vibration issue from it. And that is, that is because these gates haven't outright failed, but the fibers are still weak. So... Without a load, like I'm not putting a load on it with this. This is, this is only just testing the circuit electrically, but it is not putting a load on it. When the load is applied to this silicon, you can still have symptoms of a bad IGBT that you can't measure. So it's just something to be aware of it when you're going through the process. And again, the question was, why do they fail? So the heat, the silicon breaks down. You can have any one of these little module components fail. These plugs that, that go into them, these are common failure points we struggle with. So you could have a bad plug issue. When the plug's in there, actually making sure that each of those pins are fully depressed, that's an important troubleshooting step because that can cause instability here because these three gates have to work in sequence, whether they're individual legs or whether they're one common leg, they have to work in sequence with each other. 
to get that sequence perfect, we have to make sure we have solid connection here. So that's where these this Molex point becomes an extremely common failure point because we don't have a solid enough connection to properly control these these three modules in sequence with one another. These components aren't built to last absolutely forever. So they're going to have failure points. Just the condenser fan motor, bearings, all of these are components that fail with wear and tear. The silicon components are no different. Absolutely no different. So it doesn't mean that there was a source of cause for the failure versus it could have just aged and wore out. I mean, think about the current draw we're putting through these things. Like we're moving major amounts of electricity through one of these modules every day, all day. Some things I would add to that. Keep in mind, IGBTs can be used as both an inverter and a rectifier. So in a lot of drive technology, like variable speed drives, we have historically used SCRs as silicon controlled rectifiers, hence the rectification. We've used those rectifiers to get our positive and negative DC bus. And so the inverter and rectifier indicate its actual purpose in the system. The IGBT or SCR is the style of component that is, that is being used. What is the internal makeup of the silicon that we can expect to see with a component like that versus what role it serves. So the inverter and rectifier is the role. The IGBT and SCR is the type of component itself.